Welcome back to the Balance Bully Podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I'm your host, Nikita Renthigden. Always excited to be back in the house with y'all. Welcome, welcome. It's an exciting, exciting beginning of the next part of this quarter for the year. Depending on when you are hearing this, and we are an evergreen podcast with almost 200 episodes deep, so hopefully you have been going through all the layers and eating up all those personal development tools, you might be hearing this right on time towards the end of April of 2022. And if you are, we're in Stress Awareness Month. I don't know about y'all, but anybody feeling the stress of this year flying by and the weather not being able to make up its mind of what it wants to do? I'm feeling it just a little bit because all of my energy wants to be naked on a beach somewhere, but I'm going to be appropriate and be clothed, at least for this part of the show, and welcome in someone who is magical in every single element of her being. I am excited and thrilled to invite this huge, powerful being into your presence because she is a quiet storm, and I mean this in every sense of the word. She seems like an introvert, but I'm not really sure. We'll wait to see how she turns up when we start talking. <laughs> I want to welcome Dr. Omolara. I'm going to say her last name correctly. Uwemadimo. I think I said that right. Dr. Omolara, welcome to the podcast and tell everyone about melanin and medicine and passion to profit and all the amazing things that you are doing to make sure that our people of color who are physicians are well taken care of. Hello, thank you so much. And I am a big introvert. I am, I claim it. I <laughs> um, So thank you so much. I'm super excited. As you said, I um, really just am excited to talk about any, in any venue where we can support more of us as women, especially as women of color, especially as black women in particular, mm -hmm. as well, all of those intersections to really figure out what their vision is and do it unapologetically um, because our society often is, it has relegated us to say, no, you can't go there. That's not the place. And so I'm just super excited to have that opportunity to talk about my journey on how I did that, almost kicking and screaming all the way, <laughs> <laughs> but how, and how I'm doing it. I, I have not reached the mountaintop. So truly, truly excited. No, I love that you even say, I haven't reached the mountaintop, which of course is going to change and extend and stretch because you have a whole lot on your plate. So there is constantly things that you are reaching for and striving for to make the world better, starting with your home. Because I know you are married with little people who, I don't know, seven and nine, they might still be considered little. In my head, with a 25 and 21-year-old, those are little people, that you're constantly trying to make this world not only better for them, but ready to welcome them in all of their beauty and their brilliance. So I know your mountain is going to keep moving either way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And don't get it twisted. Generation Alpha is coming for our next. Like, they look like they're seven and nine, but they're really 33 and... 42, just so you know, <laughs> this generation is different. <laughs> yes, I listen, I am with you. My grandbabies are three and four, and I'm already trying to figure out what species they are, because it's not human. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I hear you. So tell everyone a little bit about what you have going on. So I know you are a practicing physician who is also an entrepreneur and a founder. Yeah, so I actually recently stopped practicing, um, and the reason is because I am a, a car carrying member of team doing too much and I am trying <laughs> to um, give my car back um, as, as often as I can. Um, one of the, so I run two businesses, CEO of Melanin and Medicine and Strong Children Wellness. Strong Children Wellness was my first baby um, and Strong Children Wellness is really an entity that grew out of collective frustration with healthcare spaces and how they treat our people and our community. Uh -huh. um, in particular, the lack of time, the lack of, um, I would say, dignity and responsiveness that we could, we could provide inside of, you know, this healthcare system that really wasn't designed for us. And so ultimately, myself and two other Black pediatricians decided that, you know, 
like James Baldwin said, we got to create the space Come where on. we fit. Mm-hmm. And so ultimately what we did was we said, where are the communities that need our resources and are have been marginalized? And who are the organizations that they love? And who are the organizations that are actually doing the work? And how can we just bring in physical health services into that work so that they can get everything that they need? So we decided to create that model. We have a practice network, which has three practices and growing, which includes spaces like behavioral health care organizations, foster care agencies, where we are basically supplanting and bringing health care into these spaces and, and working with psychosocially complex kids and families. Um, in doing so, I had to learn these entrepreneur skills yeah. and particularly skills on funding because we decided to take care of low income individuals and our system does not provide healthcare providers with the ability to do so. Um, and so we've had to learn how to get funding and learn how to not bootstrap, which I think is a really hard thing. Yeah. It's, I think black women are twice as likely to bootstrap and take their, from their savings and from their income. And so to date for the 18 months that we have opened our doors, we've um, funded I think we've gotten about 600,000 or more in non-dilutive funding to supplement our work to be able to care for the communities that we want to care for. And in doing so, I started to realize that there were a lot of us as healthcare workers who were tired, (laughs) broken down, (laughs) burnt out, um, and also uh, had developed, like myself, chronic diseases um, from doing everything we could for our communities and a weathering. And so um, I've created Melanin Medicine as a space for us to take our lives back as mm-hmm. healthcare workers, as specifically black women in healthcare. And um, it started with just work-life integration. And then these people were like, nope, that's not enough. We need to shift. And I was like, okay, well, we're going to do career transition. Mm-hmm. Nope, not enough. We need to build. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to work mm-hmm. on social entrepreneurship. Not enough. We need to get the funding. Okay, we're also going to do that. And so we hit the continuum of providing services to Black women in healthcare. I like to say to bring their healthcare vision to life. So that's the encompassing um, theme of the work. And so that's what I do. Listen, honey, I'm trying, I'm itching to grab my maracas and shake them, but I know it's going to mess up our audio. So I won't do that. I'm visually shaking all the excellence (laughs) and energy. That is phenomenal. You reminded me as you were talking about the vision that you had and then brought forth and made it fruit that you could literally tangibly eat and serve to other healthcare providers that are trying to do greater with their lives and build their visions forward. As you were talking, I thought about one of the first public, and I put public in quotations, public speaking engagements I had where I presented, the topic was, who's helping the helpers? And I remember that came from such a deep-seated place. At the time, I was director of behavioral health and outcomes at Support Center Child, Child Advocates, and I had to get all the healthcare workers, you know, when you're dealing with sexual abuse and all the things, and the child advocates and the lawyers and the social workers and the case managers, everyone is burnt out, right? Like, you're burnt out from the topic, you're burnt out from what you're everyone. seeing, all the visuals that we had to go through with the court files, like all of it let alone the in-person stuff that we had to deal with. And the team at SCCA, Support Center for Child Advocates, was like, well, in addition to being director of outcome and behavioral health, you're also director of training. I was like, am I? Where did that come from? But okay, here we go. And so I had to put together trainings. And the first thought I had was, well, what's needed that no one is talking about at that time? We're talking early 2000s. Um, And it was us not being served as healthcare providers, us not knowing where to turn to without being labeled within our systems that we were working in as, oh, something's wrong with Nikita because she need, right? Like, or something's wrong with Dr. Omalara or whatever. Um, So when I did this presentation, it was all obviously about stress-induced illnesses and all the things that could provoke and exacerbate chronic illnesses that we may have quiet genes going on for, all that stuff. And I remember... One of the people, there were lots of people, I think it was 75, 80 people in the room. One of the people specifically that came up to me afterwards literally said, I wish there was a way for me to do what you're doing in a way that could be a business. 
but I don't have the money for it. And I was like, I don't need to do that. You see where I work? Like, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> so it was just a conversation of just, you know, sharing our frustration more than anything. But if we would have had a Dr. Omolara then, we're talking almost 20 some years ago, if we would have had you then, it would have been such a game changer for so many people in the room. So I can just imagine how many lives you are changing from the ripple effect of helping one physician or one healthcare provider Mm -hmm. actually take their vision and make it tangible the way they did. No, I appreciate that. And it's funny because you know, women will, um, who I've worked with and they, they basically become family, right? I have one of my clients who's like, your cousin, like I, your cousin Omalara, like, they're, they're like, and she's opening her practice by the way, at the end of this uh, month. And, um, and it's just beautiful to be able to say, Oh, a year ago, like you were debating if you were going to leave. And, and I think it's just so important for us to not, I feel like we have the excuses. I always say the five D's that we have, either I'm damaged or I'm too distracted or I'm disconnected. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know how to get there or I'm deserted. I don't got people or I'm um, diminished. I don't have the money. And I, and I always say like the important thing around this is really for us to start to recognize that what, we've been given and for me I'm a very spiritual person but what we've been given is not there by accident it didn't just show up and so all of these excuses that you're giving are wonderful Mm -hmm. but I do think it's really important for us as black women to step into that space and a lot of us are are normalized to see adversity and say okay well you know this is what's happening and let me just work through that and not do the like absolutely ridiculous and crazy that uh, by ed- by everyone else everyone else's standards and so i think that's just really important for us to have people seeing more of us doing it and i think when i talk to all the women it's the community yeah. it's like she's doing it too okay <laughs> she's doing it too right because we normalize stay in your place sit down be quiet and make sure you keep your government job, mm. okay? <laughs> like... <laughs> Ooh, child. Mm. You are reminding me so much of what I've told my kids and my clients. Normal is not necessary. Just because it's normal, because our parents and our parents' parents said, work at that good government job or whatever that job is for 30 years, retire, yeah. get your pension. First of all, what pension? That's, that's a whole separate <laughs> conversation, right? But we yeah. we were, most of us, I know that there are some that have some entrepreneurial family or entrepreneurial spirits. <laughs> I'm laughing because for all the people of color who have grown up in or near urban environments, you understand when I say entrepreneurial spirits, like the street pharmacists and <laughs> those who had the gift and the skill, they just applied it in a different way. Not necessarily in the traditional way. That was the family I grew up in. So there wasn't the traditional, like, you need advisors, you need a board, you need to make sure that you have your paperwork ducks in the row, all the things that you're talking about. And no one was definitely talking about the five Ds that you mentioned, Mm -hmm. not in any relatable way that would make sense and and call us out. Because sometimes that's what we need. Let Let me talk to you, sis. Let me talk to you, brother. Like, you know, I'm talking to your soul right now, to your heart. This is what I'm hearing when you said I can't do it. I heard all of this. I heard this D or that D or the other. Um, And I don't want you to get caught up in trying to lay the D and that being your distraction because that's a real thing, too, on every level. (laughs) Listen, on every level. And here at the Balance Bully Podcast, where we're talking about work, life, and love, sometimes the love the infatuation, the caught upness, I'd be making up words here, like all of it can get in the way of where you're trying to really grow and what you might need to grow through. And also how you evolve, right? Because some relationships, some things, right, aren't letting us grow. Come on. We aren't, right? And I think that it's important for us to recognize 
you know, that if you're not growing, you're, you're dying. I, I, and it's really important for us to think about, are you okay with that right now? Cause it might be a season where you're like, you know, I'm going to rest. I'm going to, but I think, um, the, I think a few things, one, just understanding that as people of color, that entrepreneurial spirit is like literally our lifeblood because there has been nothing, especially in most of the spaces that we exist in now that has been made for us. We've had to create yeah. everything right to, to fit, to fashion, to, to um, be able to be a space where, where we can work or, or do anything. It's always been in how, no matter if we're in an organization and there's a job description and then we have to figure out actually that's not going to make this happen and you're creating. And I think that we all, um, I know one of the things that I usually have to talk about, or I would say to myself was, oh, I guess all I could be is a doctor. I don't got no other skills. (laughs) Right. This was before I had even thought about entrepreneurship. And then we don't break down everything that this is not just something that flew out the sky. There have been breadcrumbs all through your life for the thing that you're cre- you're creating and doing that work, doing the purpose work, the vision work of going back to the past and looking at those mountaintop experiences and being like, I w- there was a valley before that. And how did I get to that place? And what's the theme of the things that I see as meaningful? Okay, so let me now put that together and say, where what's the next step? And, and what is this telling me? And we don't, you know, a lot of us don't have time to do it or we're scared of doing it. We're scared of what it's going to tell us. Absolutely. A thousand percent. I think that there is a huge, a huge gap inside a lot of us when we don't have models of that behavior, of that trucking through, of that pushing through, of that growing of the dying of self that sometimes need it, right? Like so that 6D that you didn't mention might be <laughs> the death, you know, divorcing that old part of you, the dying of that part of you that just didn't believe that anything else was possible. Maybe because we didn't see it, we didn't have, you know, appropriate models, role models. We didn't have teachers that might have poured into us that way that kind of fed our belief that we were only meant for this one thing. Oh, you're a good dancer. You're going to dance. Like, well, maybe I am an engineer and the way that I see things in my head is through movement. How about that? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. with all the different ways that we say things to our kids and a, a colleague of mine mentioned the other day, our job is not to shape our children, but to get all of the things out of their way so they can explore what's in their environment and shape themselves Mm. to whoever they're Mm. supposed to be. And I was like, Oh, where was you when I was trying to be a young parent? But um, (laughs) (laughs) it's so true. because I have two girls and I know, you know, cause I think as parents, we're just like, nothing, nothing can happen to you. What's the safest place for you? Because Every day, right? You send them out to wherever. And I have seven, nine, your kids are in their 20s and it doesn't change every day. You're like, where are they? Are they okay? And and so we come from a place of meaningful safety, of being like safety and then realizing that the places where we've been the most joyful have never been decisions of safety. When I decided to move to Malawi and go work there, my mom was like in tears. Like, what are you doing? what are you doing? A $40,000 salary and you're going to like, well, I have to, and I was like, this is where I need to be. And I think, and that still resonates as one of the most important and pivotal times of my life. And so if we think back, like we, like we talked about in those spaces where you felt like so free, not safe, not brave, like often people are telling us to be here, but free, they've often been from decisions that were completely unsafe, completely uncomfortable, completely not the norm. And getting to that space is really, is really, um, you have, it's proactive work. Yeah. Yeah. A thousand percent. And I'm listening to you. You just re-evoked that initial feeling I had when I decided to jump into entrepreneurship, leaving being a trauma specialist and a psychotherapist and all the different hats that I wore and be like, you know what? 
I'm really good at what I do. I love what I do, but I'm not in love with it anymore, which for anyone who's listening to this that have been in any kind of relationship, you know there is a difference. Being in love and loving is an, is like opposites in the pendulum swinging. And when I made that jump, it was scary. And it wasn't, there was no safety. Because <laughs> we were, to your earlier point, we were 100% bootstrap. We couldn't get loans from any bank. We did try, but even with a 750 score and all those things that we was packing and money in the bank, we were faced with a lot of unfortunate prejudice going to a lot of the banks that I won't put it out here now, but all of you know, some of the banks that are in the news right now for denying small business loans to black and brown people, every last one of them was on our list and we had hit all of them and they were like, nope, nope, sorry, Um, because you didn't have experience as an entrepreneur. And I'm like, well, I got to start somewhere. So, (laughs) and we had to take all of our funds and investments and and do all the things. And it was the most freeing experience that I could have had in that moment, as well as here we are 11 years later, being very proud to say it was the best, most difficult decision that I ever had to make because my kids were younger, right? We had tuitions, we had all the things that would make a sane human being said, oh, no, not now. Let's delay it. Was delay one of the Gs? The deferrer? Delay it? Like, let's let's delay it. Let's push it out. You know, let's wait for the kids to be older. Let's, let's wait till we got some travel out the way and, and did some other things. But my heart was called forth. And I'm a really spiritual person, too. And I knew that I needed to walk forth in my purpose to free other people by showing up fully as myself, however messy that might have looked 11 years ago when I had zero idea of what I was doing as an entrepreneur. <laughs> yes. I'm an inf- just so you know, right? I started my my first 20, what was, when did we actually put it incorporated? 2019, that was SCW and 2020 was um, Melanin and Medicine. And if you would tell me that both of those businesses now in 2022 are like, you know, we're, we're both at multi six and we're light figures and we're, and we've been able to just sustain and have teams. It would be absolutely like I would be on the floor laughing at you in 2018. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Don't even tell me, tell me that. But I think what's, I was reading a book. It's called The Bridge um, Call My Back. Mm. And it's a, a collection of essays, um, black feminist work, uh, ra- and it's, I think, radical writings of women of color i think is the subtext text nice there's one one of the editors is cherry moraga and she has an essay called la guerra and she talks about this statement where she says polite timidity is killing us and it is it is now become a mantra that i'm like just hitting on every day and i have to even work as the mother of two girls have to like also not let that timidity right that politeness Uh that to not let let me um exacerbate that or perpetuate that in them right they they need to be respectful okay we got it right right but the idea that i can't say what i i i need to say because you know i i don't want this for and 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 not recognizing the stress and the weathering the fact that our telomeres, the, the ends of our chromosome shorten, which means our life expectancy shortens. So it is a life or death thing from us keeping in all of the things, the ideas, the beliefs, the thoughts, the actions that would be the most freeing for us. It is, it is if we realize that if we could see that black doesn't, black does crack on the inside. Right. And if we could see that, I think we would work differently. And now as someone who lives with a disability and autoimmune disorder and has a remnant every day of see, see what polite timidity did. Okay. Uh So so we're not doing that anymore. And when that spirit hits where it's like, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to say what needs to be said and let the call cards fall where they may. I'm going to do what needs to be done Uh and let the cards fall where they may. It's, it's, It's really important. I want to throw my shoe at you. Listen, that was so on point on so many levels. Like, I I, I feel like a part two is necessary. That's all. I'm just going to drop that in your spirit. Let your assistants know. Like, Nikita's booking us out in a couple months. So be ready. 
just that right there, that last part of how stress-induced anything can cause other things to exacerbate in our body because we're not showing up as full as we should be. Not that we're causing our illnesses, and I know that that's not what you're saying, you know, with your medical background and all of it, but we can exacerbate something. We can turn on light switches that never had to come on. <laughs> we were happy leaving those corners quiet and dark just the way they needed to uh, before we started holding back and pulling all of that greatness inward to the point that it implodes and causes so much chaos and damage within us. Woo! I, I like really literally want to throw something at you right now. And it's not even funny. It's important <laughs> though, Nikita, for people to know that it is a both and it is the systematic exploitation and extraction of black bodies. And it is us, you know, potentially complying with that by not being able to share. And it's for us to be in community with each other and share what we're dealing with and share our ideas and get the ideas to grow the things that we need to do that will be our own spaces, right? That will be our, our freedom spaces and will be the things that we lead. So it's not cookie cutter in any of these, right. but it's really about us collectively, individually, and in the system. And, and I think that's just important for, for people to, to understand. So that's a great point that you... You no, honey, you, listen, you tied it with a bow because the and, A and D in parentheses is how I write everything. <laughs> like, it's always, <laughs> right? There is an and to, to it and you hit it. Whew, okay, because everybody's going to be like, Nikita, stop fangirling Zaka Omalara. <laughs> and it's all right no. because I can fangirl her all I want because she is melanin and medicine rolled into one. That's all I'm going to say there. And I can do the same. <laughs> <laughs> So I have to ask you before we close this particular section of the episode, because you know I literally legit am happy to be back on the show. How, when you're not running two businesses and being a beautiful, amazing, sexy wife and a loving mother, how are you giving yourself permission to call? Yeah, it's the mornings for me. It's um, um, I, I have a devotional. Um, it's called Our Bible. And it's um, a really great space. Like, it's just so different than what I learned virtually. Like, this week, it's on James Baldwin's sayings and connecting them to the Bible. And just, like, being able to merge these places of activism and my spirituality. And it just gives me joy. It's like, I don't need to be a siloed person and I, I just wake up and I'm like, okay, let's, what are we going to talk about today? Um, Jesus. And then, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. and then it's, and then it just grounds me so that the work that we do as entrepreneurs is a pouring work. Right. And so I, I have to have something and especially as an introvert, I have no energy at all without that, without that in, internal, um, internal nurturing yeah. I would say and so that is my pausing and then yeah I just of course books are always first and foremost but that space in the mornings is really important to me that's powerful oh I love it and how can people connect with you yeah so I'm on all the social medias um, Twitter is my Angela Davis type personality <laughs> Um, LinkedIn is a little less, but not by much. Um, but, uh, you can catch me at melanin and melanin medicine co on Instagram, or you can just go to our website. Just go to www, um, www.melanin and and medicine.co. Um, and you will see everything, including our master classes, our, um, services for organizations, as well as for the coaching for individuals. And some free stuff that we got for you guys. So. Yes, I love it. And I will throw it out here. You guys will see at the bottom of the show notes, no matter when you are looking at this, the Passion to Profit Masterclass that you have coming up for free as well, right? Yes, yes. You go to melaninandmedicine.co and you'll see it at the top of the page to register. Oh, that is so perfect. Uh, I just have to breathe you in for a moment. Thank you. I honor you for carving out this time. I know how full your schedule is with all the things 
that you are purposefully spinning and holding on tight to in your hand and in your spirit and in your space. And I'm just so grateful and honored that you carved out time for all of us today. Thank you so much, Nikita. You truly are a model. Like I said, I'm an, an infant in this realm and just kind of seeing more women stay in their fullness of who they are and um, be able to show up and and in doing so you're just helping so many of us and so just super excited that I got a chance so um yeah I'm 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 grateful very grateful Ah, we're fangirling each other I love it Balance Bowley listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. If you are brand new to the show, the highest honor you could give is reviewing this episode and sharing with someone else in your circle that could benefit from every single tool that was dropped vis-a-vis the story of Dr. Amalara. It's been beautiful and meticulously woven to make sure that none of you have to make the same mistakes and all of you can embrace the spirit of freedom that she and her team have also embraced as well. Thank you again. Uh, Look at the bottom of the show notes. You will see every single link that you need to make sure you connect and follow with Dr. Amalara. Get that passion to profit masterclass as well as the Joy Map Method masterclass that is also at the bottom of the show notes. And until next time, I want you to enjoy the balance of your day, but remember, do it boldly. Mm -hmm.